In this video, someone asks Dr. Heiser about church images, like what we see in the cathedrals in Europe, and whether they were pagan in origin. There are a couple of things happening here with this question. First is about the images themselves. The second commandment says, you shall not make for yourself a carved image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. This commandment prohibited specifically worshipping images and there has been controversy in church history over this issue. There was even a schism that occurred in the 8th and 9th centuries between the Eastern Orthodox Church and the Byzantine Empire over it. The second issue here that the questioner is getting at is, should churches use images if religious images in general have a pagan origin? This is a similar type of question as, should we celebrate Christmas and Easter since there are indications that pagan elements have influenced those holidays? Let's hear what Michael Heiser has to say. Chris was just wondering when church images began to emerge, like murals and statues. Was paganism part of, the, of its beginning? Yeah, I, I don't, I really don't know. This is a church history question. I'm not a church historian. Uh, I can tell you, though, that images of angels are very old. Um, you know, it, with, and we're talking about here within the believing community. You know, obviously, you know, you're going to have in the pagan community, you're going to have images of things. I mean, if, if it's a thing in heaven like cherubim, well, that goes back to the biblical period because you have cherubim in the temple on top of the ark, you know, and so on and so forth. But this is something a little wider, obviously, this question. Um, if, you, if you're looking at something like, you know, murals or uh, the, the, the thing that the example that pops into my head are zodiac mosaics, like in Jewish synagogues. And these are all like fourth, fifth, sixth century and, and, and later. So late antiquity, uh, you know, you're, you're going to have icon you know, images in, in you know, the, the Eastern Roman Empire, you know, Byzantine. Uh, again, late antiquity is going to be the period. So it, uh, that, chronologically, that's about the best I can do. I mean, in the Zodiac mosaics, you actually even have depictions of God uh, in human form. The one I'm thinking of is uh, God in, in his heavenly chariot, which and, and it uses, this is a Jewish synagogue. It uses uh, Sol Invictus, uh, you know, the conquering sun imagery, you know, for, for how... Um, how, you know, sort of the imagery that pagans would have used, but but in this case, it's the it's the God of Israel that, that, that they're using it for. You say, well, how in the world could that appear in a synagogue you know, when they have the commands about not making a graven image? Well, they didn't consider it a graven image because they're not worshiping it, A, and it's not an idol. It's just a picture. So they, they looked at pictures differently. They're, tr they're still transmitting correct theology about Yahweh. He is the, the one who made the sun and the constellations. I mean, no, no other deity did that. So they're they're still you know transmitting you know good theology through it, but that that's the thing that pops into my head about at least images of God uh, being pretty early you know again late antiquity I think is is the evidence we have for that. But ultimately I'm not I'm not a church historian, so I couldn't I couldn't tell you when the kind of thing that you'll see occasionally in a synagogue when that sort of moved over into the churches. I, I don't know.